And we're live on Game Changers with me, Vicki Abelson. And my guest today is my wonderful friend, Kathy Ladman. Hi, Hello. Kathy. Hello. You know, I didn't get to tell you before yes, I today neglected you. Oh, friend, what was that? Was, that's, that's the Facebook. Um, oh, man. I, that's annoying as hell, but now it's gone. I didn't get to tell you how fabulous you look, which you really have, you look fabulous. Oh, thank fabulous. you. You do. You look really. I, I love this uh, this embracing of your truth, and um, I, the you know the hair just so works for you. Thank you, thank it you. Really I, does. I really I really like having gray hair. I love it. Oh my God, it's so Love fabulous it. on you. And I don't and I don't feel that way about most people, but yours is really spectacular. I got lucky. I got really how, lucky. How did you end up? How did you end up? Because the process of getting there could not have been easy. It actually was easy. Oh um, my hair was pretty short. Yeah. And the hairdresser I was going to at the time, she pu she pulled in, she pulled some highlights. Right. Throughout so that it th there wasn't such a line of demarcation as it grew out. Uh-huh. And since it was short, it wasn't that um, I mean it was pretty short. It wasn't like Annie Lennox short, but it was <laughs> but it was short. And certainly yeah. not Sinead O'Connor short, but it was <laughs> it was pretty short. Um, so it wasn't as painful. It, it, it wasn't like this. I don't remember you with really short oh yes I, I do i do i do i do i do but it wasn't like that kind of short but it was shorter yes i mean i've had some bad short haircuts i've had some nice short haircuts but i've had some pretty bad short haircuts wow and one of them was when i was in white oleander oh tell tell us about that well um you know i got the part and then I really shouldn't have done this. I got a haircut, oh. um, but it was it was like months. It was months down the road or something. And when I showed right. up, the um, ha the hair person or the wardrobe person or something, she right. said, "Oh, good, you have short hair because now we don't have to differentiate between you and somebody else." I don't know who huh. it was. Yeah. But anyway, so. Um, but it was really short and it and it does not look good on a big movie screen. Mm. So tell us about the how'd you get that? That's like a fabulous film. How did that how did you get that role? How did that happen for Let you? Let me think. Um wow. I got it because Ellen Lewis had mm -hmm. cast me in something. Mm -hmm. And and I can't remember what she had cast me in at first first but she she knew that they needed someone for this scene and it was a very um it was a pivotal scene right in in the movie so and so she brought she actually she set up a meeting with me and her and the director uh-huh and peter kosminski i think was his name is his right. name i believe uh -huh. and um and we met down in uh Hermosa in Manhattan Beach or Hermosa at the studios down there. And uh -huh. um, and he just said, he just really just talked to me for a while. And he said that it's an important scene in the film and it won't be cut because it's where the character the lead actress asserts her independence. And um, oh, so um, that was it. So it was great. And it was and uh, it was at the, it, the location was the uh, the Rose Bowl flea market and it was really hot it was really hot and how long um, how long were you shooting just a day but but just a full day. day in the in the in the heat and who yeah. was your who was your scene with um my scene was with oh god <laughs> um, i got it. don't the, worry the, the lead of the film allison what's her name are you looking it up now? I'm going to look it up now. We have to go I to was, Google. I was going right. to look it up. All right. I'll look it up now. I'm, okay. I, I've, I'm, I've got like 10 screens working because the Facebook is messing with us and it's making me crazy. Oh, but I'm, I'm trying to pay no attention to that and uh, pay attention to you and not be bothered with it. But uh, yeah, they found out my little trick of how I got us to go live on four different platforms. And they've now. And that's just, is that just not allowed? 
Well, it was allowed last week. It was allowed the week hmm. before, but they've decided they're not letting that happen now. Allison, Allison Lohman. Lohman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, and I, and I got to go to the table read with all these cool people. It was like, really like, well, Michelle Pfeiffer, Renee Zellweger. Fantastic. Uh, I don't know if was Robin right there. Maybe, um, Maybe it was Amy, maybe it was Amy Aquino that they were trying to differentiate between the two of us. Um, because Oh, I bet. Because Amy had has curly dark. Well, she's also gone gray, actually. Yeah, Amy. but but back then she was that. right. Right, right, right. Um and it and anyway, it was a it was a it was a very fun experience. It was a very fun experience. Um and I mean, I love doing stuff like that. I love doing movies. I had it, it. Had it, what was your first film and how did you segue from television to, to film? I think I just, I mean, I did them concurrently. I'm pretty sure. And I think the first, oh, the, well, the very first movie I did was something called Nervous Ticks, which you've <laughs> likely not heard of. And I worked with Bill Pullman. No, oh, I was, I know I love oh. him too. And uh, Josh Mostel. Oh, wow. And um, that, that's what my scene was with them. Mm -hmm. um, but there How was fun. Some, yeah, but there were some other cool people in, in the film also. And um, it was a low, it was a low, I'm pretty sure it was a low budget film um, or just an, well, I think, no, I don't know if it was low budget now. I'm not sure. But anyway, that was my very first film. And then my first big budget film was Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Oh, gosh. And I think the reason I got the part mm -hmm. was my character had to sh uh, spit sunflower seeds into a pail. <laughs> and I know how to make the sound just with my mouth. I went <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, I think my dad taught me how to do that. You curl your tongue and then you blow out. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. And anyway, so. <laughs> And I'm, I remember on my callback, the director, Steve <laughs> Herrick, was it? He just um, was crazy for it. He, he thought that was hilarious. And that's how I got that. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you get it, as long as you get it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things of how you got to where you're going. But what I really want to talk about is your show and your life. And, where you, and I seem to recall... My sober birthday is tomorrow. I'm going to be 20 years sober. It's wild. And mine was and, yesterday. And I remember, and our belly button On our birthdays, natal birthdays. Right. That's hilarious. So, so, I, and yours is like, are you 40 years? 36. How did I get 40? Are we allowed I, to talk about this? We are. As long as we don't name the program, we're allowed to talk about oh, it. Yes, of course. Really? Oh, really? We just okay. have to not say the name, but- you know, there are oh. people out there who might be helped from our experience, strength. But, and, you know, oh, I, to you tell know. you the truth, in my show, I say the name. You know what, Kathy? And I in think it will help more people than that. And that's the thing is that when those suggestions were made, it mm -hmm. was a different time. The world mm -hmm. was a different place. Right. And now this is the way we reach people. And right. so there are people that will be helped. I have no doubt right. about it. Okay. So, okay. So, so tell us about your show. Let, all right. Let me see if I can pull this off. Okay. I'm going I'm to try to see if I can pull up. Share Kathy's. your screen. I'm going to try to share my screen. I'm going to blow up Kathy's poster and see if this will work. You know, Facebook's uh, having their way with me today. They're mm. not letting me share things either. Okay. It's okay. So let's see if they'll let me. No, they're not letting me share okay. it. Okay. All so right. I'm just being controlled by the man right now. Um, oh, so Kathy, so horrible. <laughs> tell tell us about your show. Does this show make me look fat? Um, it's 20 years in the making, <laughs> more than 20 years in the making. And well, it's really a lifetime in the making, but I've been mm -hmm. working on it on and off for over 20 years. And um, it's about um, my anorexia and how, what I, how I grew up, what I was tackling in my household. And a lot of, I mean, it covers the th themes of perfectionism, control, um, <sighs> And, which, uh, which play out differently for different people. For me, it was addiction to substances and food right. and love for you. So 
36 years ago, mm -hmm. anorexia was barely being mentioned. No, 36 years ago. Yeah, I guess it was, it was already. Yeah. Yeah. It was 36 years ago was 1986. Oh, yeah. So it was already. So it thing. was, but, but, it, you know, it was a pretty young, you know, as far as the, as far as the, uh, knowledge base in 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 society because when i um karen carpenter died in 1983 well that oh, that blew it open to everybody yeah, so it's yes. only it was only you know three years that's really young i had a friend in 1970 who was anorexic before we had a name for it right. really and we did she didn't we didn't really know what was going on with her other than right. she was yeah so how well i was diagnosed in I believe 1977, I believe. And how 77 did 77 or 78? How did you 78? How did it ma me. when did it first manifest for you? When did when were you first aware of it? Would you say? Um it started to it started to really get its hooks in me mm -hmm. in um when I was about 19. And do you, was there an inciting incident, as they say? Was there yes. anything? Oh, there was. Okay. Yes. The thing that really spun me was a friend dumped me. A girlfriend? Yes. And yeah. did it have to do with your weight? Nope. No, but it was that. And then, oh, you know, I think I'm going to have to close these blinds soon because the sun's going to come down. I already see it getting really light go, on me. Go, go do it do, now. Yeah. Go do your thing. I'm sorry. Okay. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. By the way, everybody out there, I'm, I'm having a, a bit of a, a funk fest because I had finally learned how to stream live to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube all at the same time, which sort of made up for the fact that Facebook was telling me I had zero views or 34 views. And now tonight they wouldn't let me get on doing that. They've, they've, yeah. So they're just, um, time. I'm my so not used to it being, uh, I'm so not used to it being light daylight it's, savings time. Yeah. Is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. and, so anyway, so, um, it was a combination of that happening. And then I was so devastated mm -hmm. by, um, that occurrence that I left school to, and, and uh, left school in Albany to go to Queens College for a semester just to get away from the scene of the crime. And um, I was living with my parents, which was really hard, mm. you know, such such control over me. And and I really remembered how great it felt when I had started to lose weight the prior year. I lost a little bit of weight. Wait, let's just, backtrack a yes. little. Did you have a weight issue prior to this? Well, I felt that I weighed too much. You know, my my neck, my body, the way it wants to be naturally is not mm -hmm. to my liking. Okay. Um, how I many probably, pounds more is it than you feel comfortable with? Probably about... Uh, well, where I am now, I mean, right now, I can I say a number? Is it okay? Yeah, sure, of course. Right now, I weigh about 120 pounds. I would kill. Um, but I would really like to weigh 115 pounds. Wow. But that gets dangerous because then I would really like to weigh 112 pounds. And then I'd like to weigh 110 pounds. And then I'd like to weigh 107. And, and so on and so on. How but, tall are you, um, Kathy? 5'4". Well, wow, that's, that's low. That's, 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 that's thin. Well, which, which number is then? All of those to me oh, okay. are thin. Okay. I haven't weighed 120 well, in a in long time. Well, in college, I weighed 127 pounds and that felt just too much for me. I mean, where I, where I am right now feels too much for me, but I, I kind of, I realize that I have to accept that that's where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to like it, but I have to accept it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So you had the inciting incident, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the girlfriend dumped you, you, yes. you moved back home. How quickly did that manifest into you eating differently? Oh, quickly. I just lost power. Oh my God. I just saw that. I have no power, but, but I'm still have, on. I'm still on because I have a, um, what are those things called? I have a transmitter that I was given as a gift, whatever it's called. Oh, my power just came back. Generator. 
Is it a yeah, generator? I have a, my, my power just came back on. This Jeez. is wicked weird. Uh, it's because it's 90 degrees in LA and everybody's got their air on for the first time, I guess. I guess. Um, so I have no idea if my air conditioning well, we don't is have going to go back on here. So, uh, okay. So I'm sorry about that interruption. That's okay. So many. So how quickly did that or not, did that impact your eating? It, it, or it, it very quickly, very quickly. And I had diet pills that I had gotten from this quack doctor, non-amphetamine diet pills, but they still really helped to suppress my appetite and using those, it started to help me to change my eating habits. And I very slowly went from probably over a period of, I would say- Oh my say, God, my power just oh, went out went again. again. This is gonna be a really interesting show. Sorry, okay, I'm still here. I have a generator that should keep us going for the whole show. Okay, um, so um, I, I went from about 127 pounds in approximately two, two and a half years down to 85 pounds. Oh my gosh. Actually Can you, below 85, you know. What, what were you eating anything? Um, as little as possible. So what did it, what did a day look like in consumption in those days? Well, like, um, in the morning I'd have an English muffin with my coffee. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Then for lunch, I'd have a, a tab, an oh. apple and a tab or something. Mm -hmm. Dinner was, was spare, very spare. Like what, what would dinner look like? It's hard to remember. I mean, yeah, like a piece, like a piece of chicken, maybe. Uh, no, of course, no skin. I still don't eat that. Um, uh, like a little salad. Um, everything was ti very tiny, very tiny. And I walked all over the city when I lived in Manhattan. I walked constantly, mm -hmm. constantly to burn calories. Now your parent, you were living at home. Your parents had to. Oh, notice. that yeah, right. That yeah, my parents did notice, uh, and 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 well, this is a, a cut to a different time. Like when I, when I was in family therapy, um, did your power go back on yet? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I was in family therapy with them, um, my parents and my two sisters. Uh, my father at one point said, open the refrigerator and take a piece of rye bread. That's how, that was his cure to my anorexia. <laughs> rye bread will cure anything if you're right. Jewish. <laughs> right. So did but he they... just, he didn't get it. He just didn't get it at all. And was it something, okay, I'm trying to remember in, in, in the mid to later seventies, was it, was it a topic of... I went to college with a girl who was also, and we all just talked about it, but it didn't have a name. We didn't have a name for it yet. Right. Did your well, parents put a name to it? Um, my mother was a, you know, a voracious reader of the New York times and, and, you know, she would, anything that was on the, on the cutting edge of science or whatever that right. was in the paper, she paid attention right. to. So, you know, she would circle these articles and put them on the, closed toilet for me to read. And I was like, <laughs> Ugh, I don't want to read it. You know, it was like, so leave me alone. And she actually recommended that I um, uh, join this, the 12 step program for food. And God, um, there was a 12 step program for food back then in the 70s. Yes. Yes. Wow. I but they, I called the number and they said, if you want a meeting list, uh, send 25 cents, 25 cents to this mail. And, you know, and I said, oh, forget <laughs> it. This is too much trouble. So, um, you know, what happened was I had this job and I'm telling you the whole, my whole show now. Oh, yeah, but it's not, it's not the same when you're sitting no, in a conversation than when you're doing your thing. Um, so I, I had this job at an ad agency mm -hmm. and uh, my boss. I'm coming to see your show anyway, Kathy. Good, good. <laughs> and, uh, and they're and all coming with me. Good. <laughs> um, my boss um, at the ad agency was very concerned about the way I looked. And she said, she gave me a, uh, the name of a doctor and she said, go see this doctor. Uh -huh. And I was like, so skinny. I was, oh my God. I was so skinny. And um, I stopped getting my period, you know, oh, yeah. I, I mean, my body, that's what happens. Your body shuts down in the order of 
the importance in each system and, and right. the first system to go is the reproductive system. So, um, so I went to see the doctor and he named it. He said, you're anorexic. And he suggested that I go to the Ackerman Institute for Family Therapy. Um, and, um, and ultimately that's what I did. And that started me on a path. And then I didn't find, I, I'm like, I want to say it, but uh, I can't say it here. Um, anyway, I, want, I didn't find that until later. The 12, the 12 step program. Yes. 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 So Kathy, if you could, I, I have food issues. I, I'm yes. an addict. And so I am addicted to, to substances, to food, to love. I know how to stop smoking pot. I know how to quit smoking cigarettes. I know how to stop drinking. It's really difficult when food is something we do. I have never right. mastered the art of controlling right. my food. And it, for me, I'm supposed to release control to turn it over, to let it go. But if right. I do that, I'm eating potato chips and Cheetos. So, well, how, I don't think that's the case though, Vicki. If I, I don't, if, if I don't stop myself, yeah, I have to be vigilant. Mm, I have to be okay, vigilant but for if me. You really, if you really apply the steps to this problem, that I not, haven't done. Right. That won't, that is not the case. Okay. So I'm, okay. So that's what I'm, that was my next question. How do you go about Utilizing this step, how do you go about changing the mindset that enables you to eat and to allow yourself to gain weight and to allow this to happen without making you crazy? It's all, oh no, it's, it, it does make me crazy. It's very mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. Um, I don't like it. As I said earlier, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that that's where I have to go. And you know, look at the, get the damage I've done to my body. I have osteoporosis. Um, I was never able to get pregnant. I don't know if that ha that was why, but who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I I can't imagine that I didn't do some damage uh, to my body. How long did you stay crazy thin like that? Um, I would say, well. I probably broke a hundred and around 1985. I probably hit 185. No, no, no. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think I hit 185. Wow. And then I stayed very, very close in the low hundreds for a long time. And, you know, I mean, I, I really was like under 115 for many, 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 many years. And so what did you eating when you were, when you were maintaining that kind of weight, which to my estimation, a woman of your height of our, I'm a little tiny bit taller, mm -hmm. that's underweight. How it's actually not. It's where I, what I weigh now. Oh, oh, you're talking about no 115, oh. I oh. think is like a little, for, it's a little, for, it's a for slightly a middle aged for a middle aged woman right. at five, four, right. that's low. Right. I it's could, not healthy. I, yeah. So I'll tell you what happened. I was, you know, for, I was still not eating. Um, I was, you know, I was doing, I had a career. I was doing well, um, still quite thin. I um, was doing television and I got this uh, pilot and I was, and I was still not eating lunch. Um, I was, people asked me to lunch and I would lie. You know, I would say I have plans or, you uh, whatever. And because I'd already had breakfast and I couldn't allow myself to eat breakfast and lunch. So if I knew I was going to have lunch, I wouldn't eat breakfast. It was all very, very micromanaging. Right. And um, so, you know, then I got this pilot and I was on set at 9 a.m. and working hard all day. And then all the actors, gorgeous people would go out to lunch and they'd eat. And they, when it came, they eat at lunch. What a crazy what a concept! <laughs> and 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 you know when it was my turn, I'd say I'm not hungry, which was you know such a fucking lie. Right. Um. And um. I want to talk about that too. So um, finally one day, I go out to lunch with one of the other uh, stars of the show, and 
we're at this place. I'll ne- I always remember this place. It was called, it's called Flaming Patties. Mm-hmm. It's on La Brea. I mean, no, excuse me. It's on Vine, just um, north of Melrose in a strip mall. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting at the counter with him and he ordered something and, and, I, and he said, come on, Kathy, get something to eat. Get a, get a grilled chicken sandwich. And I was so scared, but I was looking at him and he was just like handsome and successful and he was eating lunch. <laughs> and I thought, boy, if he can eat lunch, why can't I? So I said, okay. And let me tell you, it just opened up a whole world for me. Really? I, yeah, I stopped getting headaches in the afternoon. I started having a social life with friends. I could go to lunch with people. Wow. It was, and so that's how I started eating lunch. What, and so tell me about the hunger because I told you I'm on this crazy, really fat burn, very low yeah. diet. Because um, those things can't last, Vicky. They, they can't. They, you can't live like that. You have to find a way to live in your own skin and, and develop a lifestyle that is palatable. That's but acceptable. I needed to reset myself because yeah. I needed to stop craving sugar. I needed to stop tr- craving fat. I can needed to. For- st- can you force that? It's not force. Once you stop eating things, I have found I stopped craving them. You know, I made a, oh, okay. a, a post yesterday. I'd kill for a potato chip. But the truth was, until I wrote that, I hadn't thought about a potato chip okay. in a month. I hadn't thought about ice cream in a month. I mean, I'm, right. I don't eat it. I don't think about it. Right. So for me, it's a reset. It's also get, getting my cholesterol in, in, in line. Right. You know, it's doing a lot of good things. And I needed right. to lose the weight. I couldn't lose the weight. So this but is a you, jump start. Okay. But do you see this as, as a lifestyle change? Absolutely I mean, not. But what it's doing is it's shrinking my stomach. I eat okay. maybe 800 calories a day. Oh my God. I know. That's but insane. I, but I don't lose. I was eating 1200 and I couldn't lose. I was losing like a half a pound a week. Maybe no. your body wasn't supposed to. Well, you know, maybe, but I want to see, I'm eating very healthy, organic, grass fed. Everything is really healthy, organic, wonderful. And I want to see once I get to the weight I'm trying to get to, if I can maintain there, maybe Mm -hmm. I can't, maybe I'm going to fly right, you know, but maybe I can. And -hmm. maybe this is teaching me a better way to get through my day. So what I'm asking you is Mm -hmm. how did you, how do you, did you deal with hunger? Because it makes me crazy, but then at a certain point, it almost becomes the norm. Well, when I'm hungry, generally it means that my body needs something, right? My body needs some food. Mm -hmm. I'm not a I'm not an, uh, I'm not a nervous eater. I'm not an emotional eater. Wow. I'm, I'm an emotional starver. That's what, right. That's right, what right. I am. Right. Um, and, um, I it's, I'm still learning how to listen to my body and to let my body tell me when it needs food. And, and does that mean getting hungry? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you're hungry, Mm-hmm. In spite of this thing, yes. you will eat something. So, what does that look like? So, let's say you get hungry in between meals. Are you going to eat something? Um, yeah, I'll have something. I'll have maybe a few nuts or a little mm-hmm. bit of cheese. Uh, protein is always a good thing to have because it's long lasting. It you know, it's not like like sugar or carbohydrate. You know. And do you um, ever bit? Do you ever overeat? Do you ever binge? Do you? Well, ever- I, al- I think I always overeat. I mean, to me, you know. But do I ever binge? No, I'm not a binger. And will I'm you also- eat a piece of pizza? Yes. Okay. But yes. one. Sometimes two. It depends on how you know. It depends on how what kind of slices they are. I mean, you know, New York, they, they, they give you They're slices. That, in the words of. <laughs> Tom Herrera, they're like flags. <laughs> <laughs> I call the one on the Upper West Side rug pizza. It's literally the size of a rug. It's just enormous. Which which pizza place? It's on a hundred and 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 tenth and Broadway. Oh, Cornette. V- no, oh, Cornette. Oh, yeah. I only know V and T. Well, V and T is around the corner, but Cornette okay. is just up. You buy by the slice, and right. we literally have the pans 
that wow. are this big. It's, it's wow. And people go in and need two of them. Anyway, wow. But so you'll let yourself do that. Um, and I, not- I generally feel a little uncomfortable afterwards, like emotionally uncomfortable, but it passes. But you're not going to sit there with a bag of potato chips and start eating out of the bag. No. Wow, Kathy. I don't I even can't. know. I can't. I, 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 I can't live with myself. What is it? Okay, so that's a good question. What is it? Fit, so let's say you do eat something beyond what you're comfortable eating. I just have to like, I call my sponsor. I power through. I power through it. I, I, and I know that the moment's going to pass. Okay. I know it's going to pass. But you're not going to starve yourself anymore. No. I so, threaten to. I threaten to, but I'm not going to. So you get hungry and you have something to eat. Yes. I love that. That that's yes. that's recovery right there. Yeah. So Maria asks, did you do laxatives and thyroid meds when you were uh, were struggling with this? You mean a b a b did you t- do la- I don't know what the thyroid med is, but the I, but the laxative stuff, did you do laxatives to, to get rid of weight? weight? Yeah. No, that's not why that I would do a no. laxative. No, I um I have a different reason to use a laxative. Okay. But um <laughs> I um, <We're> old. <laughs> um I've always tended towards constipation. Thank you to my fans. <laughs> um and I am on thyroid medication now. I I um I have to be because I have thyroid disease. Aha. Uh-huh. I do too Hashimoto's, but I'm not on the meds yet. Oh, okay. so Tova wants to know, please teach me how not to live, how to, how not to live with myself eating a bag of chips. I guess she's being a oh, wise. You, yeah. yeah. But she, cause she said that she sat down today and ate a whole bag of chips and she's right. in self-loathing. What kind, I mean, like a big bag or a snack you know, bag? Yeah. I, I think it was a probably bag? a big bag. Yeah. Well, you know, that kind of, when you do, generally speaking, when, when you eat like that, you're not, you're not eating out of hunger. Right. There's a different reason that you're eating it. And I think that you need to look at it, need to need to examine why, why you're eating that. What, what is, what is the feeling that you are pushing down? So the food program that you go to Kathy mm-hmm. addresses, I believe both issues, people that yes. starve themselves and people yes. that eat too much. Is that yes. so? Mm-hmm. And, and this same program, applying the steps to eating can help people of all kinds of food issues. Yes. That's so? That is so. Because I feel me, like we're, I feel like we're on what's my line. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> this is it. I know, cause we're not mentioning it, Yes, but I'm just trying to observe the traditions of, but I know, anyway. but see, I, like I told you, I mentioned it in my show. You can do whatever you want. I, this is what I, I mean. Do. I might get flack. I might get criticism. Not from, from my audience. You're not going right. to get it. But what she's saying, she eats because of her husband, but you don't eat because of your husband, Tova. You eat because of how your husband makes you feel. It's right. um, It's not him. It's it's not his. It's not anybody else's fault. And it's not your fault either. I'm not affixing blame to this, but there is a reason that you're doing it. And, um, and it deserves to be looked at. Okay. So this is perfect. Next question. Do you now understand what, causes this in you um it's the, my need to control my need to feel that i have something to say about things that i really don't have anything to say about i mean when you look at life there's very little that we can control oh god yeah. and i was raised to think that i could control everything that's, by that's you those are the parents i those are the parents I had. They were very, they were people who control, tried to control their environments and made me think that I could control my environment too. Can you give us an example of that? Um, trying to think. If you, can uh, you think of something where they didn't approve of the way you were handling handle? some? Yeah. Well, let me see if this, if this story fills that. Okay. Um, one time I was talking to my mother and she asked me how I was doing. And I said, I'm depressed. And she said, oh, that's not good. She said, are you, are you taking care of it? Are you taking care of yourself? I said, yeah, I'm taking care of myself. Are you doing everything you can to feel better? Yes. I'm doing everything I can to feel better. Are you doing your best? 
Yes, mom, I'm doing my best. Well, just do your very best and then do some more. Was your mother a therapist? No. What, what, what did your mother do? She was a teacher. Um, she taught um, remedial reading and uh, basic skills to um, uh, college students, community college students. And um, no, she, you know, I don't think a therapist would have said that. I mean, but this sounds therapist. like something a mother, I mean, a mother who was a teacher would say to their students, this do this some, just do, do your best and then do some more. That's not even possible grammatically. <laughs> I mean, come on. So, so I had a mother very much like my mother didn't say it as articulately. She was just like, you did it wrong. Um, and this is how you can do it. And I, right. I expect you to do it better, more. Right. You're doing it wrong. Right. Um, you're bad. Well, you, know, you know, that's why I gravitated towards science and math when I was a kid. I was not a good English student. Because, that's shocking because you're a writer. I know. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I didn't have the confidence in myself to, uh, to, uh, allow myself to, to express my own perspective. Mm. Um, I loved science and math because there was one correct answer that you could find. Wow. It was very objective. English was subjective and it, and it, to me, um, necessitated self-confidence, which I didn't have. Wow. So for me too, the addiction goes back to uh, trying to control, to feel, feeling less than mm -hmm. so that if I do this, then I will be okay, mm -hmm. which could be translated to eating as well, I guess. So what is recovery from this look like for you emotionally? Forget that, okay, so you're eating differently, but how right. are you getting yourself to feel differently? Well, I can't get myself to feel well, well, differently. Right. Um, I, and sometimes I feel um, a way that is not particularly helpful to me. And sometimes mm -hmm. I have to act as if. I was just going to say to yeah. act as if. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to. And sometimes I... And, and I, and like when we were talking about before, before the, um, I think it was before the pod, the podcast started. Mm -hmm. Do you call this a podcast? Even though I call it Facebook? a talk show, it's a talk fine. show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when you couldn't find your pen and you, and it was driving you right. crazy and you went to get another pen, but you couldn't find that one. And, and you said, it's, it's, does she said you said, D does that drive you crazy? I said, you know, sometimes yes, but sometimes no, I said, sometimes I'm able to let go of that. That's, that's recovery for me, you know? And how does it translate to the, so let's say you're looking at yourself and you're like, no, I really want to lose a pound or two. I, I would yeah. really like to lose. Yeah. Um, but you don't let yourself, you, you may, I eat my meals. I you eat, eat my meals. meals. Right. And I don't, and, and I, and I don't eat, I don't eat, you know, I mean, people could look at my meals and think, well, this is, this is not a lot of food. That might, that might be, I mean, I don't eat things that are heavy or rich or I, I just don't eat like that ever. I don't enjoy, I mean, my, my biggest, um, indulgence I think is eggplant Parmesan. <laughs> I love eggplant Parmesan and I allow myself to have it sometimes. Okay. You know. Um, Pearl asks how this affects your daughter. Does, does she have, does Milan have a good body image? Has she had any issues with this? You know, she was kind of on the heavy side when she mm -hmm. was an adolescent, mm -hmm. but then she lost a lot of weight. And at, at one point I was a little concerned, but she seems to just have not be, um, she's not obsessed with it. She's just Which not obsessed is fantastic. with it. Did you find yourself having to hold back saying something or did you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a parent, that's challenging. Yeah. So 
the he, the writing is the healing the performing is the healing and, and mm-hmm. telling the story is so um mm-hmm. being of service to so many other people just just doing this having this conversation so many women are on this thread even right. a gentleman saying how helpful this is and how oh, much good. they appreciate it um good, because and it's show, not, and it's I was, i'm sorry i just wanted to say that it's not just about food and eating the show it's it's about perfectionism it's about controlling it's about um learning to accept yourself you know so let's talk about that for a minute yeah so i too am a perfectionist because i was always told that what i was doing was not good enough and that i should yeah that nothing was ever good enough so how do you have self-acceptance do you have self-love to some degree to some degree i do Mm -hmm. i don't i mean maybe not as much as others maybe more than others you know but um do you catch yourself in the moment if you're finding yeah. that you're being unkind to yourself? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I was just, well, I was just in therapy today and my therapist was saying, boy, you can beat yourself up like nobody else. I said, I know, I know I'm really, I'm really good at it. And when you become self-aware that you're doing it, do you have a tool that can take you out of that? Um, I don't know if it's a tool necessarily. I just, I just, say I just say stop I mean I just say stop that's a tool that's a really good one Mm -hmm. it's time to stop and and does that work when you do that yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I mean you know like sometimes like what will happen as a a stand-up if I have a show that I don't like that's very hard to let go of but I have to because they're 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 fleeting right you have a show you don't like you have a show you do like you have a show you don't like you have a show you do like you know. So it's, tell it's, us about, <laughs> does this show make me look fat and where people can see it? And, and oh. then we're going to go back and talk about other things. But Okay. So does this show make me look fat? Can uh, you can come to see it at um, the Pico Playhouse, which is on Pico Boulevard between, I think it's between Overland and Beverly Glen. That's a, okay. that's a big spread there, but it's, um, and it's, um, it's going to be on June 3rd, 4th and 5th. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Excellent. And there will be, I will be putting it all over social media and there will be a ticket link going up pretty soon. Excellent. So Kathy, how is it memorizing? We've talked a few days. When, you know, I don't, how the hell do you do it? What are you I doing? How are you know. doing it? It's scaring the <laughs> shit out of me. Oh I'm like God. so nervous that I'm not going to know it, but I'm working really hard on it. What I do is I, the show is separated into several beats Mm-hmm. And I record the beats on my phone and then I walk around and listen to them and mouth the words along. And then when I rehearse, of course, it really cements the memorization. I mean, I, I think when, I, when I'm rehearsing and doing the blocking and saying it over and over and over, um, some lines my director says, say it five times, Let's do that line over five times, do that link with this one five times, you know. That's a good, that's a good trick. Not a trick, but that's a good no. method. Um, yeah. Tony said, will the show go on the road and tour? I'm that that's one of my goals. My here's I have I have several, several pronged goals, goals go for this Tell show. Us. I like I'd like it to go um to the, theaters in other cities uh in this country. Um I would like it to be a TV special mm-hmm. um on some network, HBO, Netflix, something, Mm -hmm. because I want to reach more people. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to do it uh, at colleges because I think it's a really important age. In fact, I would love to do it at high schools, but I don't know if it's written to that level. Um, But, you know, I I think some high school kids would, would get a lot of it. Although there are some references that are just older references Well, maybe Um, at some point you could adapt it for that. Yeah. 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 And, Mm -hmm. and I also would like to do some speaking engagements about it. So you did a TEDx talk with it, didn't you? A TED, a TED med talk. Yeah. TED med. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was already so long ago. I can't believe it. And the show has, has, has moved along much farther since then. So I believe that if I want to manifest something, I have to say it out loud, write it down and, and uh, tell it to somebody else. And okay. then um, 
then it kind of makes it so. And uh, okay. I found that to be true. So you just I said just it out loud. said it out loud and I told it to somebody else. So now I have to write it down. Now just write those things down because okay. I really believe you're going to manifest this. this gonna, okay. Well, it's already manifesting for you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I think it would exciting. be a good. And the thing that the thing that I really like about this is that not only does it have have the chance to bring me some um, personal success, I'd be helping people. Mm -hmm. And that to me, with all the shit that we, the material that we've had to do in this business um, just for a buck, it would mean a lot to me to do something that I feel is substantive and, and helpful. And something that you have experienced so deeply for so yeah, long. Yeah, I mean, I think that my, my struggles can be maybe, um, you know, could be perhaps less than someone else's. Absolutely. You know, Kathy, I, I read somewhere this condition that I have, which has a name, which I don't remember what it is, but it's obsessing about food. Like I think about food. Mm -hmm. So do I, honey. A ridiculous amount so of do time. I. A ridiculous. Okay. So do you get tools for, what do you do? You know, I don't want to think about food. I don't want to think about what I'm, I meditate. I think about what I'm going to eat. I don't want to be doing that. How do you distract yourself? When you're thinking about well, food. I make sure that I'm not too hungry. I'm, I find mm. myself thinking about food more when I'm hungry. Good point. Um, and um, when I was anorexic, I mean, what I'm still anorexic, but when I was really in my disease, I would read cookbooks and magazines and plan meals. And I mean, I was just all about serving other people meals. And it was just food was so on top of my mind all the right. time because I wasn't giving it to myself. I give it to myself. I still think about it, but, uh, but more so when I am hungry and also more, for me emotionally, when I'm wanting love or something else, I will right. start thinking about food because it's right. a comfort thing. So uh, Tony who went, okay. Tony Vincent went to Cordoza and Cindy oh, B, wow. but not a little behind, I think you, but and Cindy I graduated B. in January of 1972, but I was young. I was 16. I graduated in December of 71, actually. Yeah. Wow. I was 16. Wow. I Smarty wanted to get kid. the hell out of that house. Marty, I was motivated more than anything. <laughs> where'd you go when you where'd you go to college when you graduated? Albany, SUNY Albany, State but University then you of New York. Left and then went I back. went one semester at Queens College and then back to Albany again. Oh, I see. And so you had um, in your early years an experience of your first love that I make you tell this story every time, and I'm going to make you because now we're going to change it up. Now we're going to we're going to get a little lighter and have a little okay. fun because we've talked very serious for this, but it's was important, this, and I'm glad we have. Was it heavy? No, it was really good, and it's really important because this is an issue. I, you know, this band of COVID crazies. Um, Tony has your yearbook, by the way. She said June 1971. Oh wow. Um, so, uh, and Cindy Beagle does as well. You're in her yearbook as well. It's hysterical. Um, so, okay. So let's, let's do this in a methodical way. So you're right. a little kid. You're funny. I know you had to always be funny. I was funny. When do you know that you're funny? Well, I always, I mean, I think I, I, I was very attracted to comedy. Like at age eight, I would listen to my parents' comedy albums and um, one in particular, Nichols and May Examine Doctors, which, which I still you have, have a over great there. story about yeah, that. Yeah, I do too. have a great story about that. And um, and in ninth grade, I was voted class clown in my <laughs> in my class. <laughs> okay. And um, just my class, not the entire ninth grade, but and and I decided that. Um, then and there, I decided that I was going to be a stand-up comic when I was 13. Okay, now who me... was, who was, who were female? Joan Rivers, Tony right, Fields, Tony Fields Phyllis, Stiller. Phyllis Stiller. And then a, a lot of other people that I wasn't aware of, like, like um, Jean Carroll. No, Jean, Jean, Jean Carroll. Yeah. I think it was Jean Carroll, but, um, mm -hmm. um, but the, Tony Fields, Phyllis Stiller, Joan Rivers and then Carol Burnett, although she didn't do stand up. Right. And then Lily Tomlin. That was a little later. A little yes. Later. A little yeah. bit later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you, and now was it them that you wanted to emulate or was it male stand up comics that, uh, that, um, 
And did you, I, I, I don't know if I wanted to emulate any anyone in particular. I just wanted I, I don't to be, mean emulate their style. I just mean be a stand-up comic. It was all of them, mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. I didn't um, I didn't place a gender on it. Okay, um, I'm sure you had your favorites. I mean, I saw comedy on the Ed Sullivan Show and in the Castle oh, Mountains. Well, was were the yes. two places, right? Right. So who? So yeah, who the did Alan I love King. to watch? Yeah, who'd you love to watch? Yeah, I mean, Tony Fields, Alan King, David Steinberg. Oh, I love David, David Steinberg. Steinberg. I loved him. Mm -hmm. um, um, I used to watch. I used to love to watch Jackie Vernon. Believe it or not, do you remember him? <laughs> I he sure did. That do. Fake slideshow. <laughs> You know, he'd make believe he's clicking the next slide and he would describe it. And it was a very funny act. Mm -hmm. um, and then I used to love to watch Nichols and May on on the on the Ed Sullivan show, too. OK, so how did you start to learn other comedians acts to mm -hmm. start? Is that how no, 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 no. I just I just was inspired by them, but I didn't. Um, but I did, and I think I've told you this before, I did memorize the Nichols and May album. And when my, my mom came into my room at night, I would say my prayers, which to me is like bizarre. I said prayers too. And, I know. Yep. And, um, <laughs> and then I would do a selection off the album for her. And she wow. didn't know what to make of it. Was she a good audience for you? Not really. No, no. Not really. No, but she listened. She you she did, did. politely. She listened politely, like a two a.m. crowd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but then you got to actually participate with your. Well, what happened was, I was fifteen. Mm -hmm. This was the summer of seventy one, and um, I went on a teen tour to Israel. <laughs> And I still think that's funny, but I know. Yeah. And um, it was I call it a teen tour, but it really wasn't. It was it was a it was an organization called Histadrut, and they had these. Um, it was more serious than a, than a teen tour. It was it was we were going on two weeks of touring and then we were going to live on a kibbutz for five weeks and work. I was terrible. I didn't do any work because I wanted to be with my boyfriend who was, I, I had my first love I met on this tour and he, he was Jerry Seinfeld and Jerry <laughs> and I so used to talk about comedy all the time. And oh. I told him that he would make a really good stand up comic because he was so funny. Uh, and you're telling me he, that hadn't dawned on him until you said it. It hadn't. Wow. Kathy, we all have you to thank. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, how did Jerry, how did you guys come to, uh, how did that happen? How did we, how did we fall in love? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like we just, we just, I have to straighten my, my cushion. Um, <laughs> we, um, I don't know. We just talked and found that we each had a great love for comedy and we made each other laugh and, and it just happened. And um, then what was interesting was that he grew up in Massapequa and my father owned a bowling alley in Massapequa Park and knew Jerry's dad because Jerry's dad was in the sign business. And- um, Seinfeld was in Seinfeld the sign signs. Business. Yes, wow. yeah. Um, and, um, and Jerry didn't drive yet. He's a year and a half older than I am and he didn't drive yet, so. Sometimes we would rendezvous at the bowling alley, or sometimes I would, my dad would drive me to Jerry's house. I would stay there over uh, for the weekend. Sometimes he would stay in my house in Queens for the weekend. That's how we. How old were you? I was fifteen, and he was sixteen and a half. Wow! Just about. Well, no. Well, wait a second. I was fifteen, just shy of sixteen, and he had just turned. Uh. Maybe he had just turned 17. It's possible that he may have just turned 17. I have to I have to do the math and I'm right now. I'm, I think that's what it is. I think he is, is. He is actually our exact my exact solar opposite because his birthday is, I believe, April, April 29th. 29th. Yeah. 29th. Yeah. So yeah. exactly six months. Ago. Right. OK, so so a year and a half older or something like that. Right. Yeah, it is. A year, it is a year and a half. Yeah. Somebody just asked, were you his first love? 
I think I was. Wow. I think I was. I, you'd have to ask him, but I think I was. Um, so how long did the romance last? It was short because I was graduating early from mm -hmm. from high school. And um, and I just um, I broke up with him on the phone. Oh, my I was, God. I, I can't. You broke up with Jerry Seinfeld. You have the distinction of having broken up. Yes, yes. Love this but so then we much. went out again when I went to Queens College because he was going to Queens College. So we met up again. We hadn't spoken in a little in a little while, and we met up again, and um, we went out uh, again. And did you break about... up with him again? I think I did. Oh my god! I think I did, but I had good reason to. Um, uh, can um, you tell us what it is? He had another girlfriend at the time, mm. and I didn't want to um, be one of two. I appreciate that. Um, so, but I, from what I recall, he was a very romantic guy, didn't he? Um, he was very romantic. He wrote poems to me. I remember one of them. He was. I, I can't remember all of. Them, was it funny? Of, no, no. I was very serious. <laughs> he wrote like love poems to me. Wow. Did you keep any of them? Oh, I don't know where they are, but I remember one of them was something like I, I zoom, I shuss, I soar, she's mine. Something like that. Wow. When he gave it to me, I said, what's shuss? And he explained what it was. It's a what is skiing. When you shuss, <laughs> it's, it's Sh skiing. Shush. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Wow. I guess wow. it's maybe it's a maybe it's a Swedish word or a Swiss word or something like that. I don't know, but wow. um, yeah, he was very romantic and he emul he actually emulated me. I mean, he wanted he wanted to graduate early because I was graduating early, and he wanted to do a lot of things that I was doing because he loved me. Wow! 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 So in later years after the romances were over yes. um is there any do you guys like ever like run into each other and go i mean is there any of that we talk, we talk every now and then we talk but I, I mean we're not close friends but we we're we talk every now and then and we have a history that is important absolutely so. what mm -hmm. a, that is an incredible that is I, I make you tell me every time and i'm amused all over again as if you're <laughs> for the first time i love and you know i don't care what anybody says i mean i know elaine is supposed to be based on carol leifer but i'm sorry she looks just like you uh, <laughs> and you know it's, that's very funny and and true. some people have said that too but um you know we went i remember one time we went to jerusalem together that summer and um my, I had a cousin who worked for Golda Meir and he gave us a tour of Golda Meir's office, which was mm -hmm. really exciting. Wow. It's, yeah, it was really exciting. And so, we saw, we went to see a movie um, when we were in Israel um, and it was, it was not, I didn't think it was a very good movie, but maybe, maybe I was too young. I don't know. It was Godfrey Cambridge and Watermelon Man. Do you remember that? When he no. turns white. And he has to live as a white man. No, oh, I never saw it. Yeah, or heard interesting. Of it. Yeah. Wow. So now, all through the years, while Jerry's star is rising, and yours too. Well, please. I mean, I mean no, nobody is like Jerry. There's, there's yeah. only one Jerry. Yeah. Did were you ever in a position where he could have helped you in some way? Yeah. And did he not? I can't say I, you know, I, I, I can't say uh, all I know is I, I don't know what he could have done, but I know that it's certainly, I, I didn't see the fruits of it. Cause he certainly put a lot of his friends on Seinfeld. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. His current well, friends. Yeah. Right. That's true. That's true. Good point. Not an old girlfriend that might upset his wife, although I'm not sure Possible. he was. He wasn't no, with he Shoshana wasn't back then. then. Yeah. He wasn't married then. Mm -hmm. uh, have you met her? Um, no, I've spoken to her on the phone, but I've not met her. 
Okay, so let's talk about Kathy. So, okay. so you how know long is this show, by the way? As long as we want it to be, or oh, short. Okay. If you want, if you get oh, hungry, okay. I just you wondered. Can, you can tell me if you get hungry and you need to go eat something because I'll respect okay. that. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, so you know you're funny, and you know, and you're telling Jerry he should be a stand-up comic. Mm -hmm. You want to do that. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you till after you tell him till you? He actually... started. He started before I did. Okay. Um, he started, I think, in his senior, maybe his senior year, or just at, just after college. Mm -hmm. And it took. I was so scared. I had I had false starts, and it took me until I was. I I started when I was 20, 25. Okay, false starts. What does that mean? Like, what was the first? Well, the first time I went on stage, I was a teacher outside of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and I knew I didn't want to do it. I knew I wanted to be a stand up comic, but it was mm -hmm. scary. But I went on, I, I did some writing and I went uh, to the uh, open mic at this place called Grandma Minnie's in, in <laughs> Of course Philly. it was called Grandma <laughs> And you'll never guess who the MC was, Joe Bolster. Oh, I love Joe. I know. <laughs> and Rick Hall, Rich, Rick Hall, Rich Hall. Rich Hall, Rich Hall from Saturday Night Live. I know, I know yes. another, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Rich Hall was was on the show at that time. He was, you know, living in his car or something. <laughs> so anyway, um, so he was on the show and he complimented one of my jokes and and um, and I went back. Then I went back the next week and I didn't. I it was I, it was okay. But then I then I went to visit Jerry in New York. Uh -huh. Well, I went to I went to New York to. Uh, see my family or whatever. And I, and I, and I, and I spent some time with Jerry and I said, you know, I, I was thinking I would like to move out to Los Angeles to do stand up. And now and why, why would you want to go to Los Angeles? To do because, you know, to me, I've analyzed this. And to me, I think it's because it was a good excuse for me for not having been doing it. I'm not doing, I'm not doing stand up because it's out there. You know, New York was too close. It was too viable. I see. So, but you did do it in New York because I know. Oh, well, we eventually both, I did. Yeah, yeah. Rico yeah. at uh, good yeah, times. Yeah, at good times. <laughs> was but that was in 1981. <laughs> right. I'm talking about, in now I'm talking about 1978. Okay. So I move out, no, 77. I move out to um, Los Angeles. Oh, you go to Los Angeles before you do comedy in New York. Yes. Okay, tell me this. I don't go to LA. This. I don't go near a comedy club. Although oh. Jerry gave me, um, Jerry gave me Jay Leno's information and gave me George uh, George uh, Wallace's information, and I and I visited them, but I did not go anywhere near a comedy stage. What'd you do? I got. I was tried desperately to find a job, and the only job I could find was uh, a substitute. I was filling in for so, a, a woman who was on maternity leave at a yeshiva. Oh my god! I taught at a yeshiva. There's a it lot of Jewish stuff in this. So Jewish. <laughs> it was. Um, it was terrible, um, and um, I lasted there for only four months. I was. I was really miserable. I was just an unhappy person. I was an unhappy person. And you didn't person. do you didn't do stand up because you were afraid. I was scared. Had, had you written an act? No, I mean I wrote that little bit that I did in um, in Philly, mm -hmm. but I was too scared. I mean th these were the big fish. These are big fish in 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 a big pond, and right. I was scared. Right. I was I was really terrified, and and I was at the beginning of my disease here. You know, I'm not, right. I'm not at only the beginning. I was entrenched in my disease. Right. Okay. So that was taking energy. Yeah. So, okay. So, so then you're... I moved back to New York uh -huh. and uh, moved back in with my parents and went to family therapy. And uh, then I was finally, I have to turn this off. I was finally emancipated. I finally, you know, got my own place and started doing stand up. You know, what did what did writing your act look like? What I'm sure your comedy. Joe Bolster you... helped me, by the way. He oh, he would he listened to my material and and helped me out with it initially. What did it look? Well, like? what I did so, was I'm I sure went to a class. Evolved. Okay, I went to a class. I went to a stand up comedy class. Who was your teacher? Because Gabe was mine. My husband was my teacher. Um. Dick Lord was my oh teacher. Oh my God, Dick Lord. Yes. Wow. 
I haven't heard that name in a long time. And La- I met Larry Amaros in class. You love Larry. I know. I love him too. <laughs> wow. You were in class together? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, eventually, you know, we would go back week after week until uh, ultimately, um, um, ultimately, um, I did you do uh, like a a final, like, was the final in the class like to get stand up and it wasn't really a final, but you you'd progress and then he would say, okay, you're ready. You got five minutes. Go to good times. Uh Uh-huh. And that's what I did. Uh Uh-huh. And so how long did it take doing these little things for it to evolve for you to be an opener, let's say? Um, uh, you mean an opener like on the road? Yeah, like do that or yeah, or actually or pass at the comedy clubs. How long did it oh, take okay. you to well, find your feet? I, I mean, I worked in little club in the littler clubs in New- in Manhattan. I started on June 28th, 1981. Mm-hmm. And um, I passed auditions at my first major club, which was Catch Rising Star on December 5th, 1981. Huge. And I remember that because that was when my nephew was born. And I was so happy about him being born that what I was doing stands up at Catch kind of paled in comparison. It was really, I really kind of right-sized it Wow. And then I had a really fun show. Isn't that fabulous? It is great when something like that happens. And, and it, Catch rem- was- it reminds you to really like right size things. Like I'm so nervous about my sh- doing my show and nervous about memorizing and will and will I will I be okay and will people hate it and will they, you know, blah, 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 blah. And and I have to rem- remember it's a show. It's a show. Yes, it's important to me. It's my work. I don't want to minimize that, but it's a show and it's one day, it's three days, right? It's, and it's, and, and life will go on and I will learn from this and, and I will continue to create and make, make shows and do shows and it will go on. Yes, it will. So how long did it take you to, to segue from, doing these spots, passing a catch to where it, you're now making a living as a stand-up comic? It was very quick because it was, it was a really, I mean, first of all, I didn't require that much money. You know, I was, you know, 26 years old, 27 years old. What did I need? Um, rent on my, on my apartment, which was $360 a month. Mm-hmm. And my father was covering my health insurance. I really didn't have many other expenses. Were you doing the road? Were you doing the tri-state area and I, that kind of thing? Yes, I started doing that. I remember uh, auditioning for Jerry Stanley. And he was like, wow, where, where have you been? And, mm-hmm. and, and so I started working for him and then, you know, and then started working for everybody else who was doing that. And so, yeah, I started working the tri-state area. And then Jerry Stanley also booked the Atlanta Punchline, the opener and the mm-hmm. MC. So I did that. And that was when I just start, I started doing the road then. And so how did you go from the road to going back to LA and start doing the whole LA thing with TV and stuff? Um, well, I had a boyfriend at the time, Steve mm-hmm. Middleman. We were living together and he wanted to move out to Los Angeles. And I mm-hmm. said, and I came out to visit him. Um, he was, he came out for pilot season. I came out to, for a month to visit him. And then mm-hmm. he set up an audition for me at the comedy store. I did really well. I got passed. I became a regular and I had a place to work. So I decided to move out. And then we broke up <laughs> when we were moving out. And then, so he moved out in the summer. I didn't move out until October of 85, but I had a place to work. I mean, I was broke but I could work every night if I wanted to at the comedy store. And um, I chose to work six nights a week and I took one, I made myself take one night off and I was doing that in New York too. I made myself take one night off. What did you do on the night off? I don't know. I just made myself do it because- You didn't go to other clubs. No. Mm -hmm. Good for you. You No, I took a night off from doing stand-up. I like that you're good to yourself. I like that you've learned to be good to yourself. 
Well, I try to, I'm, I'm still very regimented. I'm very regimented, mm -hmm. but um, I try to be regimented in a good way now. <laughs> so for good, not for evil. <laughs> so how did you segue from doing stand? What was the first TV gig? The first TV gig, I believe I was on a Dolly Parton variety show, but then they, they cut my part and that they paid me off anyway. Okay, and so then, when- mm -hmm. And then I started doing pilots before I started doing episodic stuff. And, um, and then I, you know, I, I started doing episodic stuff, I guess, in the, in the um, late 80s, early 90s. So there's Everybody Loves Raymond, and you've done Modern Family, and you did, did uh, yes. Caroline in the City. How, how did you start writing for television? Um, uh, Lois, uh, Roseanne was uh, telling, Lois Bromfield was writing on Roseanne and Roseanne had asked her um, if she knew of any other women who would be good writers and she suggested me. Mm. And so I didn't even have to write a spec script. Wow. And, then and had, you done, year, had you done script writing before? No, but they needed joke people. They really I needed see. joke people. And then the following year, I had done the pilot for Caroline in the City. I was almost a series regular, but um, did not get, I mean, I, I went to network on it, did not get it, but then they wanted me to be in the pilot. And then they asked me to be a writer on the show. And so I wrote on the show, but not, but not for a full year because I really did not want to be a writer. And now I think to myself, oh, if I had stayed writing, <laughs> what a career I would have had by now. But you know, you can't live in the past. Everything happens as it's supposed yeah. to be, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. You know, Vic, I just have to say that I'm getting really warm in here. It's uh, warm in the, here, too. My air the windows went are, off when the oh thing. Oh, God. Yeah. The windows are closed. So, we're, all right. So, we're going we're gonna to speed through to where we okay. are now. Okay. And uh, and then, yeah, we're going <laughs> to... I'm we're sorry. We're dripping like Albert Brooks in, in yeah. broadcast, in broadcast news. news. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, all right. Let me ask you. I wasn't going to ask you this, but I'm going to ask you this. Uh-oh. Uh, well, no. Uh, because it's all already kind of old news, but I'm curious what okay. your take on what happened at the Academy Awards last oh. week. I want to know your opinion. Um, I think you should have slapped more people. Has that, how about that? Uh, no, I, I mean, clearly it, it was not a good joke, but you don't slap someone for that. Um, what do you think that Chris knew that, that she had alopecia? I can't say do I you, didn't know. I didn't know either. Okay. Uh, does, do you care if he knew, does it change it for you? If he knew, um, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but still, even if he did know what yeah. Will Smith did was dead wrong, okay. dead wrong. And so what do you think is the. What is the punishment that fits the crime, do you think? Um, what do you think is going to happen as a result? Do you have thoughts? Well, he was I mean, he resigned from the academy. Um, I don't know. How yeah, but that's that. like such lips. So he can't. Right. I mean, anymore. I don't know. I don't know. What can they? I have no idea. They can't take his Oscar away. No. Do you think he's? Do you think it's going to affect his career? Um, I think it'll affect his fan base. But you know what? People have really short memories when it comes to this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think he should have to go to some kind of anger management classes. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the same way about Mel Gibson that you used to in the eighties? Oh, God, no. I hate, can't stand Mel Gibson. It hurt his career when he opened his mouth. Do Good. you feel that, do you feel, this is what I'm saying, do you feel the same way about Woody Allen that you did in the 80s? Kind of do. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm on a personal, I mean, I, I don't pass judgment on the, on him personally. I love mm -hmm. his work. So do I. But did you, wa did you watch the documentary? Yes. Because that did alter. I it, I didn't feel that it was affecting the way I felt about his work yes. until I watched that documentary. And yes. that did taint, that did yeah. taint it for me yeah. quite a bit. Um, okay, but that's neither here nor there. So for you, Kathy, so what, tell me before we go, how has the pandemic been for you? What were you in the middle of when this all happened? And how is your life different or not? Well, I got breast cancer right before the pandemic on, on, on February 4th. I was uh, of 2020, I was diagnosed March 6th. I had my surgery and then we were in the pandemic oh my God. and then I gained seven pounds. 
and and have not taken it off. Um, and luckily, I just want to say that I'm, I'm I they caught it really early. Thank God. I only had to have three weeks of radiation. I'm on Thank medication God. now for another three years, mm -hmm. and um, I'm very lucky. I'm very Thank lucky. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. And so, and then my as far as my work, oh, yeah. it's not been good. It's not been good. And you know, and I've also, you know, so many things are converging. I mean, I, I I've done the road. I've done clubs. I I don't want to do that anymore. Um, what do you I want, want to do? Something. Well, I want to do this show. Okay. And, and I want to do, get on. And I want to do theaters. Mm -hmm. I want to do theaters and I want to do, I want to continue to act mm -hmm. because I really love that. Um, so what, did you, did you audition and do things out in the world during the pandemic when they started working again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, and you know, you're not COVID crazy. You're fine to go do whatever. Well, I mean, um, I haven't booked anything, okay. but I, um, uh, I, I was, I was actually, I booked one thing. I was a COVID backup on a commercial, meaning if the person who was booked tested positive, I would have stepped gotcha. into her role. Mm -hmm. um, but um, self-taping, I don't love. Mm -hmm. And that's, most of it is still self-taping. Mm -hmm. And how are you moving about the, are you moving about the world as you used to? Are you, is it- I'm more cautious. I wear my mask a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't wear it as often as I used to, but I mm -hmm. wear it a lot. Do you go to like movies and inside restaurants? I haven't been and... to a movie, but I've mm -hmm. been to live live shows, theater. Okay. Uh -huh. So you're assimilating a bit, but I know yeah. we both have had the booster experience. I had mine yesterday. You had yours today. I had mine How today. Do you feel? It hurt a lot, but I shared with you that she said to move your arm like 10 times every hour. And I've been, okay. and I, and also massage, massage the site. And, um, and that helped. Oh yeah. I'm not, it's not hurting now. It's un, that's amazing. And did you drink? So I've been I'm drinking, I am not a good water drinker. And I drank, this is the second glass of water I've had since three 30, which is a lot for me. Okay, so I'm not a water enough of a water drinker, but I drank um, one and a half liters before my shot. Wow! And I drank one and a half after, and then I wow. kept, and I keep drinking. And also, I found out green tea. The CDC yes, and I don't drink, have any at home. Unfortunately, they said to drink green tea. Actually, it, it's it's a COVID killer. Oh, they wow. say you should drink it all the time. There's something in green tea, the antioxidant that okay. breaks down the thing so it can't attach to you. Well, I don't know. Next time I go to Trader Joe's, I'm getting green tea. Get green tea. And so I have to say, reporting back after uh, 38 hours of since my shot, mm -hmm. I have had like no side effects this time. I got very chilly yesterday. I was cold. Oh. And then a little flush today, but no fever, no headache. Good. And um, this stuff works. It works Great. to do what they say. Great. So um, I hope that you have an easy uh, night tonight after your booster and everything is good. Keep drinking water. Thank you. I will. I will. And I love you so much. I love you and, too, Vicky. I love you a lot. And let's 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 go have lunch. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean it. Okay. I'm not eating lunch really now either. But I'll go. Oh wait. Lunch with what are you going to do then? How can we? No, have I'm, I'm going. I'm going to eat wisely. I'm going to eat like you. I'm going to eat a little bit of protein and a little okay. bit of vegetable, and I'm going to be fine. All right. I probably. Yeah. I'm. You'll be surprised what I eat. Give me. A, give me a preview. Well, I eat cheese. You know. Yeah. Well, that's not a surprise. I eat bread. Oh God, I haven't had a piece of bread in five weeks. I yeah. Oof. But again, that's something else. Take it away, and I don't think about it anymore. But if right. I start eating it, then I want more. Right. So, but you can eat one piece of bread and you're done, right? I can. You know, I remember, I can't remember how old I was when I did this, but, you know, we would go out for Italian food when I was a kid. We mm -hmm. would go through bread baskets like crazy. Right. And at a certain point I decided, and my father would say, that's how they get you. Because then you fill up <laughs> on bread and then you don't order as much. <laughs> Um, actually, that doesn't make sense. That's no, how that they doesn't get them. make sense. That's no, how they get them. Yes. Um, um, but um, I decided at one point that I was just going to have one piece of bread. So I would have the pleasure of having the bread. And then that was enough. And then I would eat the food that they that I ordered. I bet you don't put butter on it. Oh, I do. You do. Mm -hmm. I love butter. 
sweet butter, wow. not salted butter. Me too. Wow. All yeah. right. Well, I, I'm, I'm not as skinny as I could be. I'm sure. I mean, as but, you could be, that is a ridiculous. What does that mean? You're very thin. You're not skinny. You're very thin and spelt. I look and normal. You do. You look normal. You look wonderful. You look thinner than than the average bear, but in Whatever. a wonderful way. Whatever. A, you know, it, it shouldn't be about that anyway. I think we're obsessed with that. And it really shouldn't be about that. Well, good luck getting that across. Um, and if your show does that, then that's a great hey, thing. Hey, look, a lot of people told me not to go gray, and I didn't listen. That was a very bold thing. W did you make a decision? I was free for a while. I wanted to, and my, my manager said, don't do it and don't do it. And I said, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm just tired of coloring my hair. And it's been good for you. You look fabulous. I like it. I really like it. Thank it's, you. It's fabulous. Thanks. Some people shouldn't do it. You look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm judgy or anything. Not at Any, all. Not at all. I love you so much. Thank you so you much too, for honey. sitting down with me. Oh, so my pleasure. In the real world very soon. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye, honey. Bye, Kat.